what is up everybody welcome back to the unknown coding channel got a little something different for you today um something i definitely have done zero of on this channel and until recently wasn't really doing any projects like this uh you're gonna start to see in the channel there's gonna be a little bit more like industrial commercial stuff as well as the custom jobs that you guys are used to seeing um in this case we got i don't even remember how many feet of railing it was it was three full racks like you're seeing right now um, with primer and then gloss black. Let's get to it. So basically here I'm just showing you that you want to get up into these weird corners. These were had like kind of an angle to them because they were railings going up and down staircases. Um, so I'm just pointing out you want to make sure that you get deep into these corners every time as soon as you start spraying. As well as getting all the welds really well. Um, anywhere that rust is going to form is going to be like right in those corners or right in those welds where powder is typically thin. For some reason, this customer specifies this particular primer from Cardinal. It's a E305 epoxy primer. So we're going to be throwing this in the Optiflex Pro to start laying down some powder. As you can probably tell, these have already all been sandblasted. Uh, I'm just going through blowing them off. Also went with a flapper disc and went around and removed a bunch of the welding slag that was all over these. Uh, pretty typical in the manufacturing process when they make these. Um, sandblasting sometimes removes it, sometimes it doesn't. Just blowing it off now and then uh, gonna roll it into the booth, start laying down the primer. So normally when I'm working in this booth, I'll actually spray from the outside of the booth in, working back towards the filters. Um, on this job, I'm actually doing it the exact opposite of that. And the reason is because a couple of these railings hang down pretty low, um, as you'll kind of see throughout this video. And I'm worried about my not only touching them, um, just with me going in between, but also the hose potentially dragging on them. And if you spray from you know the side closest to the camera and work back there's a way better chance you're going to drag your hose across powder that you've just put on um, i tend to not risk that so i'll stand in the way of the powder as it gets sucked back in towards the filters it's not ideal but definitely works out better and you'll probably see in this video at least at some point i know a lot of this is time lapse so it's hard to say but i'll end up sliding the pieces of railing uh, side to side left to right i guess it would be I just did it right there just trying to give myself more room to walk around them obviously me being fat doesn't help this situation and these three railings are pretty tight on this rack um, actually all the racks of the these railings were all pretty tight so I'll end up sliding them back and forth just to give myself more room uh, make sure that my shirt or you know whatever doesn't touch any of the powder that I've just laid down um, I also typically will spray the insides first and then work the outside I decided to do, do time-lapse the video showing kind of the whole process for shooting all that as well as shooting video while I spray. Um, I did find out with my new phone for some reason it attracts powder much more and so there'll be times in this video where I'm spraying like this and a lot of powder ends up on the lens. So I'm just apologizing ahead of time for that. Uh, I know it's an issue trying some different things to try to work around it. Um, as you can see with the primer here, making sure that I get up tight into all the corners. Um, this part of this railing does not have those 45s or the angled pieces, I don't know if they're exactly 45, um, like you see in some of the previous video here. But you're still going to want to make sure that you get all your welds really well, because if you've ever seen railings, the first place that are well, the, the first place that you see rust develop is always around the welds. So I always make sure I lay the primer in thick, make sure I get it nice and coated, so I don't have to worry about rust in the future. Um, adds to the longevity of the product, and it also typically will make the welds look a little bit better. And 
here's more of those railings that have a little bit of an angle in them. What you'll see me doing is going around and spraying all the complicated areas first. I want to make sure that I get good coverage on these, so I go through, spray all of these areas first, and then I'll actually go back and coat the whole thing like I've never coated any of those parts prior to this. That is pretty much guarantees that I'm getting really good coverage in all these areas. Once again, this is going primer and then gloss black. So, I mean, it's going to have a good amount of powder on it no matter what, but always going back to the hole, make sure that you cover the welds really well because that's going to be your big failure point. Hey, and if you like this video and you want to see more like it, be sure to give me a like. Uh, it helps a ton in the YouTube algorithm. Like is like the most important thing going on right now. Um, and then also, if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to get notified every time a new video is posted. Here's a great example of me sliding over the parts to give myself more space to work around them. Um, in a situation like this where it's really tight, your hose is basically your biggest enemy in this situation, or maybe your shirt dragging along a part you've already powder coated. Sure, you can always blow it off and go back and recoat it, but you're just doing more and more work over and over and over, and so the idea is to work to avoid it as a whole. The one downside with primer being the gray that it is matching the steel that has already been sandblasted is you're going to have a hard time seeing if you got good coverage. So after the curing process, make sure you go through and check and have good, even, smooth primer everywhere that you need to. If not, you can always go back and touch it up. Make sure you remember this day really well because my knees and back were killing me after doing this. You know, there's a lot of this railing. Like I said, there's three of these racks. Uh, it was kind of a nightmare. Was ended up laying on my back to do some of them just because they were so close to the ground. And I wanted to make sure I got good coverage. Um, spraying Sherwin Williams Mirror Black on these now, and once again working from you know the filter side of the booth out towards the outside. Uh, for the same reason, don't want to drag my hose or run my shirt along it or anything. I realize, of course, that this is a, a video that's much different than what I normally would be posting on this channel. I've had a couple people ask me about doing railing and you know fencing and stuff like that. Um, I didn't do it much in the past, so I never really had the opportunities to make the video. Um, now that I am doing a little bit more of the industrial commercial stuff, uh, I'll probably, like I said, have some more videos like this. There's not much to it, honestly. This is a pretty typical just coating job like anybody else could do. Um, unless you're running big ovens, you're probably not going to be doing a lot of this, you know, fencing and railing and things of that nature. But it's the same general rule for everything. I mean, you want to make sure you get good coverage, and all of these obviously are going to be outdoors. Um, not typical that a company picks gloss black to have outdoor railings, but these guys decided to go that route and they gave me a perfect opportunity to make a new style video or a different type of video for you guys. Um, also, I don't know if you guys like the different types of videos that I'm doing. Um, leave a comment. I don't know if you guys want me doing this kind of voiceover thing or doing the kind of step-by-step -step situation where I talk to you guys you know, through the camera. Um, I'm trying different ways. I know a lot of times in this shop it's just far too loud to be trying to make videos um, especially the way that I used to make videos. I'll still be doing that, obviously. Uh, in fact, I'm editing another video tonight at some point that has me doing the old style videos, basically where I talk to the camera and walk you through the process step by step. I kind of like doing these voiceover ones just because I can just record myself working and then go back and add any of the audio stuff that I need to and do any of the explaining I need to. But I also know that there's little things that I forget to add or forget to record or forget to add in as far as like the audio after. So I don't know. Give me your thoughts. We'll go back and forth and figure out what works best for everybody. So now here's some close-up video spraying the Sherwin-Williams mirror black. Um, you can see that I'm using an attachment to hold two LED lights. Um, that makes a job like this significantly easier. I usually use a handheld light um, to do a process uh, similar to this, but when I have to be holding the uh, hose constantly to make sure that it's not dragging across any of the powder coated material, um, I don't have an extra hand for a light, obviously. So these little lights work like a champ. They definitely make it so you can see into the corners. Basically how I tend to spray is I will make sure that anything that looks glossy ends up matte. So this primer is not super shiny, obviously, but you can see even with a little bit of light on it, it gets a pretty good reflection going. Um, once you spray the 
you know powder on top of it it mats all that out so you shouldn't be able to see any gray or anything shiny um, the gray hides pretty quick but the shiny will keep showing through until you have enough powder on it this is of course the finished product after final cure this is that sherwin williams mirror black um, came out looking great obviously the camera won't even focus on the reflection because it's so wild um, glad I went and removed a bunch of the welding slag on this. Definitely makes the overall product look better. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video.